Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're bringing you a two-part tutorial on this MacBook Pro. This is going to be an upgrade guide to first off give you guys some instructions on uh, installing an SSD as well as some additional system memory in the MacBook Pro and then we're going to be going into setting up a dual boot configuration that will allow you to boot in either into the native OS 10 operating system or into Windows 7 and be able to switch back and forth between those using Boot Camp. Now I don't personally have a ton of experience working with Macs but Kyle has gone through this entire process. He's provided me with a detailed guide, so I'll be walking you guys through that. First off, let's take a look at the hardware that's involved. So here's a look at the hardware that we'll be using for this particular upgrade. First off, over here on my left, we have, of course, our MacBook Pro. Again, this is a mid-2012 version. Uh, the model number is located on the back here, etched into the unibody frame. Uh, and then also you can go into the uh, Mac icon in the upper left uh, hand corner of OS 10. You can click to uh, find about this Mac and that will give you some more information on it. We're also including a link in this video's description with some more details on which versions of the MacBook Pro can are capable of this upgrade or, or which ones, for example, can do the SSD upgrade and or the memory upgrade or vice versa. Of course, you should also have your AC adapter on hand. You're always going to want to have this plugged in uh, to the wall outlet and your actual AC power while you're doing your upgrades to make sure that uh, the battery does not run out. You will need a couple screwdrivers, so we have a Phillips head number 00, so you need a fairly small Phillips head bit on there. You also have a Torx T06 uh, fitting on there as well, so you will need the six-pointed Torx uh, bit in order to get at some of, the, uh, some of the screws that are in this MacBook Pro. We also have this little device, and this is kind of a unique one. This is uh, made by Silverstone. It's the TS-08. So what we're actually going to be doing is removing the optical drive from the MacBook Pro, and then this little housing allows you to install a 2.5-inch drive, and specifically our SSD, into that housing. So that is uh, how we're actually going to be doing the SSD upgrade on this particular one. You do lose your optical drive, but those are becoming uh, less handy to have around these days, and a lot of folks would much rather have the SSD option. Speaking of the SSD, we're going to be using a Samsung 840 Pro series. This is a 2.5 inch SSD and that's 256 gigabytes of capacity. You're also, of course, going to need your win copy of Windows 7. Now, this happens to be a not for resale version, and these are a little bit harder to come by, but any uh, retail or OEM version of full Windows 7, you can use Home, Pro, or Ultimate. Any of them will work. And finally, our system memory upgrade. These are SO DIMMs made by Kingston. Specific model number is MB1333K2 slash 8G. This is a two by four gig kit, and these are specifically designed for use in Apple systems. At this point, it's a good time to remind you folks that performing this upgrade on your MacBook Pro may or may not affect your MacBook Pro's warranty. So it's a good idea to double check with Apple to make sure that you're within your bounds, or if not, you are essentially proceeding at your own risk. That being said, we're gonna go ahead and remove your MacBook Pro's backplate first of all. Our particular MacBook Pro has 10 screws. We're gonna remove them with our Phillips head screwdriver. And of course, we're going to keep them in a safe place as they're very tiny and easy to lose. And from here, we'll simply pop off the back plate. Next step is to unplug our MacBook Pro's battery. That is definitely a very important first step. This will help to avoid a short circuit. We're gonna move on to the optical drive uninstallation. First, you will disconnect the camera cable by pulling it away from the battery plug. Do not pull up on this plug. Next up, we're going to disconnect the airport slash Bluetooth connector, and then we will disconnect the optical drive connector. From here, we will remove the two Phillips head screws that are holding on the airport slash antenna cables, and then we will lift the airport antenna cables out of the lower case. These are going to stay attached to the Mac, but we do need to move them to the side in order to access the optical drive. Moving right along, I will next be removing the three T6 Torx screws holding the optical drive in place. With the three of those removed, the optical drive should now be sitting loosely within the housing and you should be able to lift it out without too much trouble. Bear in mind as you're pulling that out, there is a slim SATA ad uh, adapter bit that's at the end of the little optical drive. You will want to pull that off so you can use it with your Silverstone Caddy. Also right next to that, there is a small metal bracket. Once you move on to final installation, you'll want to remove that bracket and also connect that to the respective place on your Silverstone caddy. Our next step will be to install the SSD into the hard drive caddy. We're going to do this by simply sliding the SSD into the serial ATA connectors. We're going to partially mount this with screws because this will be a temporary solution as we're coming back to swap the drives one more time once we copy the image. Finally, we will install the caddy into the Mac. 
Go ahead and connect the SSD to the serial ATA connectors. Mount the three Torx screws. Set the antenna cables in place and mount with the two Phillips head screws that we removed earlier. Reconnect the camera cable, optical drive connector, as well as the battery. And then again, partially remount the back plate because we will be coming back to this once the copy is finished. Finally, boot up the Mac after you've connected the power source. Next, go into your Mac OS X operating system. Go up to the Go menu, select Utilities, and then Disk Utility, and then select the SSD, click Partition, set a name, and then choose to format it as Mac OS Extended File System. From there, you want to click Options and select the GUID Partition Table, then click Apply to finish your format. Once your SSD is formatted, we're going to be downloading and running a third-party application called Carbon Copy Cloner. This is the actual software that you will use to back up your existing mechanical hard drive operating system install onto your new SSD. With that utility installed, simply select your source, and your source will be your mechanical hard drive that already has OS X installed on it. Select your target disk, that will be your newly formatted SSD. Select Backup Everything and then click clone. It will go through the cloning process and this may take between five and 20 minutes, sometimes even more. This will depend on how much data you currently have on your existing uh, Mac OS X installation. Once that process is finished, you will want to confirm that your uh, cloned disk is working properly. So go into your go menu again, select system preferences, startup disk, and then choose your new Samsung SSD. Once you've selected that as the operating system, you should be able to reboot, and the system will boot off of the SSD, and you will see an identical operating system to the one that you've currently been using. Now at this point, we have successfully upgraded our MacBook Pro from an optical drive to an SSD, and of course, we still have that mechanical hard drive in there as well. Now some folks might wanna stop right here, in which case you should go in and re reapply all of the screws and make sure that they're tight and secure. And if you are doing that, well, Getting, going from a mechanical hard drive to an SSD is gonna be a nice upgrade for you. Regardless of what operating system you're using, SSDs are faster and more responsive and it will give you a better user experience. But this is a two-part video and in part two, we will be uh, covering the upgrade of the system memory or RAM and uh, we're gonna be adding some of that. We'll also be configuring this system to dual boot using Boot Camp and will allow you to either boot into OS X like you see right here or into Windows 7. So if you'd like to see that video, you can click on the link which is probably floating above my head somewhere. If not, thanks a lot for watching this video. You can find more tech videos just like it on our Newegg TV YouTube channel. I'm Paul with Newegg TV and we'll see you all next time.